this line here, short bond signals remain. Katie, we've got the whole street lining up to say buy bonds, buy bonds, buy bonds, and you're saying short bond signals remain. Katie, why is that? Yes, I mean, you know, I'm always a contrarian in this particular bit. Um, and what's been interesting is last year we had all a ton of short signals, but the only one that seems to be somewhat persistent going into this year is short bonds. And that's really because it's a contrarian signal. It's something that few people really want to or feel that confident with. So that's where the technicals and the fundamentals and people's opinions seem to be very different. Well, Katie, and this speaks to the reason why perhaps I'm going to get hammered for seeming not as pessimistic this morning, perhaps by some people, because it seems like everybody is saying buy bonds, things are going to be rough, it's going to be a really rocky economy, and it'll be a tough picture for earnings. But that's not being ratified by the data, which is coming out stronger than expected, which might actually move against bonds and for equities. Is that really what you're seeing? Exactly. And we're also seeing positive correlation between stocks and bonds. And I think people are ready to call this bond bottom over already. And I think we still have some time if we have to keep fighting inflation at such a high level. I know we're past peak inflation, but we're still not really at the target. So I think that's where people's hope and sort of where the market might have to go this year may be different. We're still somewhat much more positive than we were last year. Um, but the bond bet is the one that remains. And there's a real issue here with not conflating optimism in the short term and optimism over the long term. Katie, is this a view, and I know that it's a technical trading kind of strategy, but is this something where we're going to avoid the worst of a downturn or we're just not going to get it yet? Is it a timing issue or is it a paradigm issue? That's a good question because we sort of think about the markets more from a technical perspective. And what we've seen is a massive consolidation and risk uh, constr construction. Basically, risk has been constricting and people have been taking less risk off the table in the last quarter. And then what we're seeing now is the market has really not decided what the next trends are going to be, with the exception of short bond signals still being relatively strong. So from that perspective, it seems like we need to navigate the difference between the longer term narrative, how do we get over the higher inflation numbers versus things are looking better. We're past peak inflation. China is reopening. Um, so it is really sort of very, very mixed right now. And Katie, how are you thinking about that China reopening story, not just from the demand side, but also from the supply side as well? Well, the China reopening story should be directly linked with oil prices, but you haven't really seen that yet. And that's where I agree with some that it's going to take a longer time than just sort of an overnight change. Um, and there's a lot of complexities in terms of how supply and uh, demand dynamics have changed post uh, 2020. So I think it is going to be a positive theme, but it may not happen as quickly as some people expect. Thus, oil prices may uh, go up again at some point uh, later this year, but there doesn't seem to be indications of that yet. So, Katie, my question would be, as we start to get a soft patch of economic data out of China, and we've seen that in the last couple of days, Katie, do you ignore that? Do you look through that in the hope, the expectation that at some point further down the road in 23, it bounces back? Yeah, I mean, I think the impact of these measures and the impact of any sort of slowdown or constraint constraints takes a lot longer to see. And that's the same narrative we're thinking about for the US this year is what is the impact of rising rates? What is the impact of all these um, of inflation in general? It's not something that's very clear. It's much more opaque and it takes time to measure. And that's why data is so important. People are so fixated on that data. I think it will take you can't ignore the shorter term data. You have to take it all into account.